Today I'm going to show you my full photo editing workflow for photos with people fully uncut as requested by a viewer. So if there's any type of a photo that you'd like to see me edit, please drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to get a photo like that and edit one. And it might take some time as it did with this photo as well, but I'll try my best to get those edits out there for you to see. But now let's jump into Lightroom and get editing. So here we have this photo of me in the Suomenlinna fortress in Helsinki and we have a window actually to the left of this image. So that's what I'm going to be emphasizing and then making myself pop out from the background. So I want to create a kind of a moody image, if that's something you'd like to say, uh, with the light coming from the left hand side of the image. So first of all, as we can see, I'm almost blown out in my face. If we turn on the histogram or the highlight warning with the histogram, you can see that my eyes are actually blowing out, but that's not a big issue. But what I want to do is preserve my uh, face or preserve the highlights of my face. I'm just going to drop the highlights a bit and I'm actually focusing on myself here. I actually want to close down this so we can see a bit more of the image here, but I want to focus on my face here because it's not a portrait actually kind of because it's kind of an environmental photo just with me in the photo, but let's just call it a portrait. So I want to drop the highlights to keep my face uh, not blowing out. And then I kind of want to boost the shadows. I'm going to blur or darken out the uh, surroundings, but I want to boost the shadows on my face. I'll be doing a lot of masking in this video later on. Now what I'll do is actually bring down the highlights even more and then bring up the exposure so that we can bring out the shadows here from my uh, left hand side of my face. Then I want to bring up the whites just a bit. I'm actually going to turn on the histogram for the warnings so that we can barely see that we're blowing out just tiny bits of my face. That's fine. I'm gonna turn that off and then gonna go back down with the blacks a bit. Not back down, just down with the blacks a bit. Something like that is looking good. So just kind of pushing the dynamic range of this image so that we have more room to work with in the curves. That's how, how just that's just how I like to work with my images. And then I'm just going to drop the white point of the curves a bit to fake the uh, whites clipping. And then I also want to bring up the black point quite a bit. And I'm going to bring it a bit towards the right as well. Because as, as I said, I want to make this kind of moody moody look for this image. Just going to bring up the highlights a bit. And then going to bring down the dark parts quite a lot actually. Because I want to have that dark moody warm feeling to this image. Now I'm going to bring up those blacks a bit to get that washed out look. We're kind of blowing out the face there, so I might just actually go a bit down with these highlights here. Something like that is looking good for now. Now off to the HSL panel. As you know, I always like to push up my saturation of each individual color to better see what I'm doing with the colors. Now red is, you can see that my ear is kind of has that red look to it. And then my shirt as well. What I'd like to have is the shirt kind of orangey instead of being red. So I'm going to push the reds up a bit. And then with my face, I always like to bring my uh, skin tones a bit more towards red instead of having like yellowish skin tones. I some for some reason prefer this like reddish skin tones, but we're going to fix a lot of the issues that you see with it, like purple lips and everything in the saturation tab once we get there. Now with the yellow, we're seeing a lot of stuff going on in the background. Oh, that was a green one. Yellow. So what I want to have is the warm look. So I'm going to go down with the yellow to make them more orange. And then not too much greens here, but you can see a bit of green in these like walls here. So just going to bring it all the way towards yellow to make those uh, yellowy. Now with the aqua, there's really not much going on, just a bit on the wall there. With the blue, I always like to bring it more towards the aqua and then the purples, as you can see, there's a lot of purple in my like lips and eyebrows and stuff like that. I want them to be red because my lips should be red. Now you can also see that there is a lot of uh, purple here on the wall. So I'd like it to be the blue color that it is, uh, that the other rocks are, but I'm going to be focusing more on my face because that's the more important part here with a photo like this. How? I'm zooming into 100%, but it seems like it's zooming really close, but it's fine. That's actually a good thing in my opinion. 
but let's just have that out of the way. Okay, we could actually close this one as well to have a bit more room to show uh, with this image. Now, I don't think there's any magenta in here. Probably something in my face, but not too much. Well, there's a bit of magenta in my lips as well. I'm gonna bring this a bit towards the red as well. Now, I'm gonna reset the saturation, and once again, I'm gonna focus on my face here, because there's going to be these blue parts, but we're gonna fix them a bit. I want to for first focus on my face. So what I want to do is bring up the red, because that's just gonna make my skin a bit more lively. If you don't have any red in your skin, it's just not gonna look good. You want to have a bit of red in your skin. Now my <laughs> lips are getting kind of gray anyways. They're not as red as they should be. But I'll fix that with masks later on. And then the orange, just gonna bring it up a bit to have some, some color on my skin. That's looking pretty good. Now with the yellows, we're pretty much doing stuff to like the background and I want to bring that down a bit. And then with the greens, gonna bring that down a bit as well to get rid of the green tint in the rocks. And then same thing with the aqua. Also same thing with the blue. I don't want to have too much blue in my image because I want to have that warm, soft look to this photo. Now with the purple, as you remember, we had some purple in my face as well as the rocks but they're not really doing too much to my face, so I'm just gonna bring it down. And then the same thing with magenta, we had some magenta in my face, but I don't want to bring that too far down because my lips are getting that magenta tint, so I'm just gonna actually leave it at zero. Now off to luminance, what I want to do is bring up the red to kind of make myself pop out a bit more. Often also, if you boost the luminance of the red, that's just gonna soften up your skin, but you can't really see it too much in this photo because of the how dark it is on my like on the side of my face that is facing the camera but then I also want to bring up the luminance of the orange a bit to kind of make myself pop out a bit more from the background and then with the yellows I actually want to bring up the yellows so that we can kind of get these highlights of these rocks kind of showing and the same thing with the greens now just gonna leave all of the cooler tones as they are. I actually might want to check the magenta because I had some magenta in my face. Now, if I bring it all the way down, you can see these artifacts on my face. Something you don't ever want to do is go too far with your luminous values kind of in in uh, relation to each other. So if I'm at plus 50 on the red channel, I want to go to about plus 50 on the magenta as well to make it look natural with the transition from one color to the other, if that makes sense. So, off to the HSL, not the HSL, uh, off to the color grading because the HSL is kind of done. You can see we're just kind of getting rid of <laughs> a lot of color with the HSL panel. Now, what I want to do is bring up the, or bring some orange to the highlights here because I want my kind of, the highlights of my skin to be of this like orange skin tone -y. Skin, skin tony, can you say skin tony? I just said it. Uh, skin color highlights. So you can see what we're doing, kind of adding that orange color into my skin with the highlights uh, wheel. Same thing with the mid-tones, just what I'm gonna do is go a bit up. Actually, I don't think I want to add too much into the mid-tones because they're kind of saturated enough already, so I'm just gonna leave it as they are. Now with the shadows, we're gonna add some orange or warmth to the shadows as well, but I don't want to do it here. I want to have more control over it, so I'm gonna do it in the masks. I'm gonna sharpen this photo at this point, so just gonna zoom in a bit. You don't want to over sharpen photos of people because that's just gonna make the skin look bad. What I want to do is go actually quite far with the sharpening until I'm kind of over sharpening it and then I'm just gonna go back a bit. Around 80 is looking fine and then I want to mask it out so that we're only affecting the edges. I'm also, once again, not focusing on the rocks here at all because I am the main subject of this photo. I'm just gonna see if I can do something better with the radius and the detail. I don't want to go too far with the detail, actually gonna leave it as it is. And then with the luminous noise reduction, you can really smoothen out skin. So if you have a portrait, just you can do do it with a mask as well, but just bringing up the luminance noise reduction will kind of smooth out the skin. So if you look at luminance at zero and luminance at 35, it's really smoothing out 
the skin there, but it can keep that detail pretty well. So that's something that I always like to do for portraits. Can I have a take a sip? Okay, that's a bit too far because you can see with the luminous noise reduction, because you can see that the shirt's kind of getting a little bit mushy there. So just gonna go back a bit. So that's fine. Gonna boost up the color, color and noise reduction a bit. We've got the profile corrections here on. I'm with the RF 35 millimeter lens. So you can see that not too much of a distortion, but there's a bit of vignetting. What I want to do is actually bring down the amount of vignetting correction. I don't want it to correct the vignetting because I'm gonna add a vignette anyways. So I wouldn't mind having it like this, but I'm just gonna get rid of a bit of the corrections. Okay, so let's just see a before and after. So this is with no tweaks and this is where we're at right now. So you can see that soft look in the shadows and then there's a lot of warmth and not too much color outside of the subject, which is me in this photo. This is starting to look quite good. I'm going to tweak the curve a little bit right here. I'm actually going to go down with the whites here as well and then just bring the dark parts down a little bit. And the black point, well, it's actually quite good where it is. So something like that is looking good. You can see how much we're doing with the curves here. Yeah, I want to create another point to bring down the like darkest parts of the contrast. Dark, dark. Want to bring a bit more contrast to the darkest parts of the image. Having a hard time talking today. So now it's time to get to masking. First of what I want to do is I think my shirt is way too bright. So I'm going to get uh, or tweak that. I want to make it a bit more orange and then a lot less saturated. So let's see if we can select detecting people is taking a lot of time right now. Okay. So I love this feature in Lightroom. Uh, I don't want to do anything with the skin right now. So what I'm going to do is clothes. That's going to be fun. Great mask. going to hit O to get rid of the overlay there. And then what I want to do is bring the tint more towards uh, green to get rid of some of that red tones so and then a bit up with the temperature so you can see what this is doing it's just making it a lot more kind of yellow then i want to bring down the well i don't want to bring down the highlights i want to keep the highlights but i want to bring down the overall exposure i kind of want to have this highlight showing maybe want to go up with the whites a bit maybe a bit up with the highlights as well and then a bit down with the shadows something like that you can see what we're doing with the tone just bringing the kind of mid tones and the dark parts down, but keeping the well, detail or the contrast with this kind of highlights there. And then I want to bring down the saturation. So something like that. I actually want to just tweak the whole hue just a tiny bit. This is a very strong slider. That's why I like to use the temperature and tint because the hue slider is just kind of not too strong, but it's really strong. So you can see with hue at zero and then, well, let's do it like this. Hue at zero and hue at two. You can see how big of a difference it actually is. If we zoom in, you can see it even better. So I don't know how much YouTube will kind of compress the and change the colors, but it's a big difference with just a value of two. So yeah, but I like that now. So if, without the mask and with the mask, it's just a lot more kind of orangey instead of being red. Let's not rename masks because I don't like to stay organized uh, and it's a bit darker as well. So that's good. Let's create a new mask with the uh, select people, prison one, and then I'm going to select my facial skin, body skin. Uh, I don't think I need to select the eyebrows, but I want to select, well, I want to do lips separately but I'm going to select facial hair because there's a lot of kind of detail in there. I don't know what this is. This is kind of my hand, but it's not a good selection, but it doesn't matter. We're not going to be able to see it anyways. Create mask. So now we have a second mask here and then I'm only going to focus on my face. I don't really want to do much. I'm just going to go over here to noise. This is kind of uh, misleading because it says noise instead of saying noise reduction, but this is the same as luminous noise, noise reductions. I'm just going to bring it up a bit. So you can see how we're 
smoothing out the skin just a little bit and then I'm gonna bring the texture down a bit as well so we can kind of smooth out my skin because I don't have perfect skin so you can see what we're doing there it's a bit too much just gonna go back quite a bit actually so something like that just a little bit smoother with the skin now what I want to do uh, is go yeah, oh not like that a little bit down with the highlights just a tiny bit and then a little bit up with the shadows because I want to kind of get a bit more dynamic range into my skin this is a very very subtle change just gonna go up with the exposure there as well a bit let's just zoom out to see the big picture and then you can see we're just kind of bringing out a bit of detail into me actually what I want to do is subtract with the brush just like this part of the image what am i at flow 12 let's go flow 100 and then just like that i don't need to do any changes to my hand there so that's it i also don't like the way the ear is looking so let's just go down with the flow and then just take it okay that's not the same no it's the same as am i actually pushing no it's doing what I wanted to do. I, I, I don't want to kind of emphasize my ear. I don't think that's the prettiest part of me. So just gonna paint it out a bit, but I do want to kind of still keep it looking natural uh, in relation to my neck. Okay, something like that. Okay, that's looking quite good actually. So whoop, let's not close those. Let's do the lips next. Okay. So just like that, we can create a mask for the lips. It's so easy. It's so damn easy in Lightroom nowadays. And then just gonna bring up the saturation of my lips and then let's try with the hue slider just a bit up and bring down the saturation a little bit. So you can see that we're just kind of adding a bit more color into the lips to give uh, a bit of life into my face, if you will. Something like that is looking good. I don't know if I want to do too much to the eyes There's a really nice catch light coming from the window Here on the left hand side. So I think the eyes are looking fine What I would do want to do is use the eraser tool and just get rid of some of these little highlights in here because they're kind of Distracting so just gonna erase a few of these real quick Not gonna be too careful with these. Just gonna get uh, I don't really like these kind of highlighted parts there. Well, you can see what we're doing here. It's it's not a massive difference, but it's just getting those kind of details that catch your eye away because they're not really the details that you want to focus on. Something like that is looking good. Okay, next up, I think I want to tweak the surroundings. So let's go back to the masks, create a new radial gradient just a massive one like this, and then I'm gonna invert it. And I actually need to make it larger, so let's zoom out, maybe not even 12, 6%. Okay, and what I would want to do is add it all the way around the image, but not on the left-hand side, because I want to keep that light coming from there. The feather is fine at 100. Let's go back to fit, and then I'm just gonna bring it down quite a bit. So something like that is looking good to me. Now what I want to do is bring up the temperature to make it a quite a lot warmer actually. Also gonna bring down the tint a little bit to make it look the way I want it to look. Okay, so something like that is good. What I do want to do is bring up the whites to kind of keep those some of the some of those highlights. Just gonna bring up the blacks a tiny bit and then even more down with the exposure so that's looking quite good what I don't want to do is affect myself there so what I'm gonna do is create a subject mask with the select people and then I'm gonna select myself and then entire person so create mask so you can see without that uh, select person and with it I'm going to do a bit of uh, extra masking for the top and bottom parts of this, but I do like what it's doing there. 
what this mask is now doing. It's kind of making everything darker and a bit warmer as well. What I actually want to do now is there's a third mask. What is this? Nothing. Didn't know where that came from. Uh, so what I want to do is with the facial skin, <laughs> I should rename my masks. What I want to do is go a bit down with the highlights here. There's a fly right in the middle of my screen right now. And then go up with the saturation a bit as well. Something like that. It's looking better. Okay. Next up, what I want to do is create a new radial gradient mask. Just gonna make it like a big circle, kind of tilted. And then here on the like bottom left corner. And then I'm gonna bring up the exposure there. Bring up the blacks to kind of have this sunburst look to it. Something like that is looking good. I'm gonna bring up the temperature, but bring down the saturation. So you can see what this mask is doing. It's just kind of emphasizing the light coming from the left hand side. What I also want to do is create that subtract mask for my entire person. Let's just do that. So you can once again see with it and without it, it's just bringing myself a little bit too uh, bright with that. I really actually like how, what it's doing to like my shoulder there. So I could just remove that, create the select people with like all of my skin and all of that, but leave the clothes unchecked so we can do the mask. Okay, it created several masks, that's fine. Okay, so now we're kind of adding brightness to the left hand side and my shirt that's looking really good. Now what I want to do is kind of darken down the left hand side of the image. I'm gonna create a linear gradient just like that and make it a bit larger or softer I should say and then just bring down the exposure. So you can see we're even more emphasizing the direction of the light. What I want to do is turn it a bit more like that. Okay, so that's looking good. And then one more for the top part of the photo. So just like that and then just darken it down. Okay, so let's see with without any masks and with the masks. I really love to play around with masks as you might have seen. Okay, that's really looking nice. Okay. Yep, this is looking really good. What I would like to do is just tweak the shirt mask here a bit. Gonna make it a bit less saturated. Something like that. And what I actually also want to do is take my... Uh, which one? Not that one. The vignetting mask. Is it this one? Yeah, this mask. And I want to go down with the blacks. I don't want to lift those blacks actually. Because right now I'm thinking that doesn't look as good as I thought it would. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. Now what I want to do, really you should always rename your masks because I'm getting quite lost with with my masks. What I want to do right now is just uh, give a bit more color to my face. So I'm gonna go down with the highlights as well a bit there. Just gonna bring up the saturation, something like that. And then bring up the whites a little bit. Okay, so you can see we're kind of bringing up some detail into the shadows and then we're kind of bringing more detail into the highlights but keeping the white point kind of white. Maybe I'm a bit too far with the saturation. Something like that is looking good. Huh, I'm too far with the highlights. It's just tweaking these kind of doing some minor tweaks at this point, but I really like where this is going. So, so if we reset it, this is where we started at, and this is where we are at right now. So a moody, warm image. What I want to do actually is crop this image quite a lot. I want it to be a bit closer. 
not a lot, but I'm gonna bring my face kind of in the middle of the frame. Something like that is looking good. There's a lot of headroom here, but that doesn't matter. Thanks, a big massive thanks to my friend Ilari for taking this photo. What I want to do is center the, what is it, arc thing, and then just straighten it out if I look at this line here. Something like that is looking perfect. Okay, so this is where we started at, and this is where we are at right now. Massive, massive difference, but this is how I would edit a portrait like this. I could also do a studio style portrait if that's something that you'd like to see. So just drop a comment down below and tell me what you want to see me edit and I'll try to make a video like that. But this is how I would edit a photo like this. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new. But that is all I have for today. So thank you for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one.